Returning to the show is a 22-year-old Canadian featherweight fighter with a perfect 7-0 record. And on September 11th, he'll be taking on Tristan Connolly at Battlefield Fight League 38. Jeremy Kennedy is back on the program. How you doing, Jeremy? Good, how are you? Uh, doing, doing well. And uh, the last time I talked to you, you were heading out to Las Vegas to try out for the Ultimate Fighter Season 22. How was that experience for you? Uh, that, that was a cool experience, man. Like, uh, it was nice to see people all around my uh, skill level and... You know, all, everyone trying to get on the show, and it was just a cool cool thing to, like, do a workout in front of Sean Shelby and uh, Jill Silva, so that was pretty cool. And how nice was it having, you know, some of your teammates down there, you know, Sean Albrecht, I know Sabah Fadai was down there as well. Was it was it good to kind of have, you know, a team there with you as well? Yeah, exactly, because I would never done that before, so I didn't know what I was getting myself into. So it was nice that we had a little crew kind of, it's a lot, long day, you know, you're, you're, you're waiting around for a long time, so... It was, it was nice to kill some time with guys that I know, I, anyways. Now, I know, uh, you know, obviously things didn't uh, work out. You didn't end up making the show. But, uh, you know, did you take anything away from the experience as far as, you know, anything that you learned or anything that you can kind of, you know, take back to you uh, to BC? Um, I would say just knowing that I'm on that level. Like, the guys that were making it through, I, I felt, you know, better on the pads and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I held my own on the grappling. So it's, I, I know I'm at that level. It's just I, I guess I wasn't what they were looking for. So that, that, was, that was a good kind of accomplishment. Yeah, and it definitely doesn't hurt, you know, to, to gain that, that sort of uh, experience anyways, you know, uh, going through it. And at least the UFC got to see who you were too, right? So yeah. I mean, that, that's important as well too. Now, after this, um, you got a pretty good invitation to go to uh, Team Alpha Male and train out there. Um, you know, how did that all get set up? Um, well, yeah, I just I had the fight scheduled with uh, Nelson. And so... I really wanted to get like a room full of guys all my size, you know, like I, I've got a good team here, but I really wanted a like a full room full of 45ers because Kyle's no, no joke. So I decided to head down there and, uh, you know, join, it was, it's been my favorite team since I've been following the sport, you know? So, uh, it was kind of like a dream come true to go train with those, those guys. Awesome. And yeah, you mentioned Kyle Nelson there. You were scheduled to fight him on the last battlefield fight card and you get to team alpha male and all of a sudden, there's your opponent. Was that like the most awkward thing you've ever experienced? Because, I mean, neither of you knew that you were going to be competing at the camp. Uh, I spoke to Kyle as well. He said the same thing. Yeah, it's uh, just kind of a, I don't know, crazy coincidence. You know, um, we, we ha kind of had the same understanding, though. Like, we, we didn't speak a word to each other the whole time we were there. So, uh, yeah, and we just stayed on opposite sides of the gym, you know, trained with obviously other people and it wasn't as bad as I, I thought it was going to be when he first when, when I first saw him there yeah and do you think because he's Canadian that you guys were civil do you think if he was an American fighter that maybe uh, things would have gotten a little bit there would have been some bad blood there or something yeah I guess if uh, you know we were both a little more hostile towards each other at the time you know there was a uh, we were just we respected each other you know like we just knew it was going to be a good fight but now I think I don't think we'd be able to do it as much because there's been a lot of back and forth between us. You know? There, there so, has. So, yeah, I was uh, gonna say anyone that's followed you guys on social media, there's been a lot of back and forth, and and it's great as it should be. You know, you two are, are both you know two of the most talented featherweights in this country. Uh, you know, both very young guys, so it's uh it's definitely a fight I think everyone wants to see. But uh, you know, I think a lot of people thought that that after uh, you know you had to pull out with your injury, um, that that you would be fighting Kyle uh, on the next battlefield card, and unfortunately. I that is uh, that, that is not happening. But first, you know, what was the injury you had that took you out of that uh, battlefield fight? Yeah, it was. Uh, I thought it was my uh, hamstring, but after going to doctors and physio and everything, it it was actually a gracilis muscle, which is in between the hamstring and the groin. So it was like just really restricting me on a lot of movements, and uh, yeah, it took it took quite a bit to heal. And but now it's good to go and. Back to training 100%. Back back to normal. And uh, were you surprised that you weren't fighting Kyle next? Because, um, you know, from what I heard after, you know, I've spoken to him, he said that apparently he signed a boat agreement uh, with this other promotion before this battlefield fight w was signed up. What, what's your take on that? You're shaking your head that's, here. <laughs> that's a lie. <laughs> so I, I actually told him the same day that when I got injured and I told battlefield promoter Jay and Kyle, I saw him at the gym, so I went and told him too. And... I even said we can reschedule for September because I talked to Jay literally before I got to the gym. And he said, yeah, September 11th, we'll re rebook it. So he knew of that fight from the day he knew we weren't fighting July 25th. Um, I guess maybe, I don't know, he saw something I didn't in this other fight. So I, I don't know, whatever. 
And it looks even worse because he's fighting the night before you are. Or yeah, the other way the around, actually, I think. The yeah, the night after. after. Sorry, yeah. So you know he would have been ready for September and uh, I don't know. Yeah. Our paths will cross eventually. I'm done talking about him, though. He's... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Understandable. Um, now, uh, you're fighting here at Battlefield Fight League 38. You're fighting a guy by the name of Tristan Conley who uh, defeated one of your teammates, uh, Sean Albrecht, one of your mentors. Um, you know, are you happy at least you're getting this fight because there is some purpose to it? Yeah, exactly. Like, when uh, Kyle decided not to uh, to fight, it kind of left me in a tough spot because we were about six weeks out from the, the September date. And I was like, oh, is, are we going to be able to find like a suitable guy and whatever? Because not a lot of people at this level would want to take a fight, you know, right at that with that amount of time. And uh, Tristan had just fought, and I guess it he he answered right away and said, yeah. So it kind of lucked out that way. And he's definitely credible, probably not because of his record, but if you look at his record, he's definitely credible, you know, especially coming off the win over Sean. I guess that's a huge win. And no one's ever done that to Sean, and I know how tough Sean is because I trained with the guy, so so I know it's going to be a tough fight. And uh, how do you think you match up against Tristan? Uh, you mentioned he got the impressive win there. You know, Sean's a tough guy, so that was you know a pretty impressive win for him. Uh, do, you, do you think it's a good matchup for you? Yeah, that's the thing, though. I, I I think I'm a bit different of a matchup from Sean. You know, I I think I'll uh, I'll pressure him a little bit more. You know, he'll he looked a little tired against against Sean, but that was like a really uh, back and forth brawl type fight which would make anybody tired but I mean, he's cutting the extra 10 pounds now and um i've proven i can go five rounds at a hard pace you know so i just i don't think he's going to be able to keep up personally at uh at, at my pace now uh for for this camp are you, are you training at the, at the usual spot and uh you know with bibiano and and, the, and sabah and those guys yeah um i've been kind of sticking to the same routine i had before heading down to california and I like I like it, you know. It's just as good as California, you know. I'm I'm more comfortable here. I get I get everything where a few things were missing out in California, just because I didn't know my way around, so I was just stuck to the gym. I, a lot of my conditioning I do at other places, and I couldn't get done out there. So, yeah, I just I've got everything here, so it's perfect. What did you take away from your time at Team Alpha Male? Like, was there something that you you know you really took away as far as the experience went? Yeah, um, like. Just having that atmosphere, like it's a cool room to be in, man. Like, they're they're like a family there, and they're all around the same size. There's all the skill, skill levels from top of the UFC to entry level UFC to just breaking into the UFC to the regional circuit guys. Like, it's the the room's full of killers, and uh, it's it's a good room to be going to every day. Yeah, and it was pretty cool. I saw on your uh, on your Twitter there, you had the picture with TJ Dillashaw, and like it, you know, it must be nice getting to, to work with uh, you know UFC fighters, UFC champions, and things like that. Were you surprised with how many Canadians were down there? Because I know Josh Hill, uh, who's out here from our neck of the woods, out here in Ontario, he's down there training. Um, you know, I know Owen Carr's down there. Um, you know, Kyle, your opponent down is down there. You know, what it, was it kind of neat to find some fellow Canucks down there? Yeah, um, Josh wasn't there when I was there, but um, Owen, Owen, he's like right into the mix there. He's like one of the main guys there now so he's part he's part of the team um uh, mike malott was down there he's a super nice guy and uh so he it was cool to have some some fellow canadians there i didn't really talk to kyle too much so i, I, I wouldn't tell. think so not not at this point not at this point um is there any plans for you to head back there in the future yeah i i was i was gonna go for this fight but everything happened so fast that uh i decided i was going to stick around for this fight stay home and uh, hopefully for next fight camp, head back down there. Yeah, and make sure that Kyle's not on the list, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, seeing, you know, I mentioned your teammates there, you know, Bibiano Fernandez, Sabah Fadai, you know, uh, Sabah just won the unified title. Bibiano probably came off one of his most impressive victories, you know, getting that knockout yeah. win in his last fight. How nice is it being able to train with guys that are they're kind of carrying that momentum right now? Yeah, it's, it's good. We're all, you know, it's it sucks for me because I was supposed to fight in May and then, supposed to fight in July and I've been training alongside them all year you know grinding just as hard as them and then they've been getting all these wins so now it's finally my turn which which is exciting and uh I'm just excited to be able to do it you know get in there finally after I think it's been eight months now and uh training all year round so I'm just ready to go so I'm excited and uh simple question for you how is this fight ending on September 11th a finish. Uh, that's uh, I don't really know how or when, but it's a finish. Early first round, second round. You know, um, I would say I would say second thir or third round. Second round. Tr Interesting. Tr Tristan's a tough guy. He's he's definitely not going out in the first round. 
he absolutely is. Now, okay, you know, we talked about your record here, 7-0. and You know, you get this when you're 8-0. and Not many guys out there with that type of record, and it's not like you're fighting chumps either. You know, some yeah. of your opponents have been very tough. Do you think you're far off from a call-up to the UFC at this point? I know you made the tryouts, but, uh, you know, Tristan's a tough guy, like you mentioned. Do you think he'd be on their radar? Um, I, I hope so. You know, there's, there's no real telling, and I'm not really looking past Tristan at all. You know, I've got a big obstacle in front of me, but – and I know – at least, I know 45 and 55 are the toughest divisions to get in. So, I mean, if I'm not ready after this fight, I'm okay with, you know, beating somebody else up. Hopefully it's Kyle Nelson. <laughs> but uh, I know Tristan, you know, I got I got a tough fight ahead of me there. So, I, that's all I got to focus on right now. Uh, just a couple more questions for you. I, I asked you earlier, you know, your prediction for the fight. I'm going to ask you another prediction here. Do you and Kyle Nelson ever fight, do you think? He, ah, I hope so. I mean, if you... I mean, yeah, it was supposed to happen twice now, and uh, one was my fault, and uh, obviously one one was his fault. So hopefully we can get it together. Yeah, I mean, he signed a battlefield, so hopefully they can, yeah. uh, they, can they can get that coming together. Um, ideally, how many more times would you like to fight this year? Or do you think you you know maybe just the one time? Um, that's the thing, you know. I, I I don't have the fights to prove it, but I've been I've been going hard since my last fight since uh, January. I've been training two to three times a day every day thinking I've got these fights all lined up. So I'm, I'm hoping to take a little bit of time off after this fight and uh, get another one in hopefully by the early next year. And last question for me, uh, you know, your nickname, Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, we talked about it last time. Did you get any In-N-Out Burger when you were down in California? I was going to get some In-N-Out Burger, but I looked at their meal, their menu, and I'm a, I'm a chicken burger type of guy too, you know? So uh, all, all their burgers are super yeah, you know, not for me. I, I tried it once, and uh, I'm a Wendy's guy. I'll stick to Wendy's. <laughs> awesome. Good stuff, Jeremy. Really want to thank you for joining me here on the program. Just let my audience know where they can get a hold of you on social media. And uh, give a shout-out to any of your sponsors. The floor is yours. All right, thanks a lot, James. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at JeremyKennedy19 and on Twitter at JeremyKennedyWC. And, yeah, I just want to thank my sponsors, Bloodhound Clothing, Popeye Supplements, uh, Bender Painting, and Ariel Banquet Hall and Convention Center.